Good morning. You're welcome to Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah and I have a special guest here whom you will meet very shortly. But be reminded, Diaspora Network Television is where we have anything diaspora here in Ghana. We're going to go to a short break. When we come back, you meet my very special guest and sister. Stay tuned. <music> Hello, my name is Kofi Opon Ochre, and I bring you NASA on DNT, a program designed to expose corruption and indiscipline in our society and advocate for the punishment of these offenders whose activities impede national development. The National Road Safety Commission indicates that Ghana loses 230 million US dollars to road accident, with over 1,600 dead reported every year. In 2018, Shrad report indicated that Ghana loses 13.5 billion Ghana cities to corruption. A United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF has also stated that Ghana loses 290 million US dollars to poor sanitation alone. This is not right. So make a date with me and together let's name and shame the offenders of the law. NASA, see something, say something. Every weekday at 12 and 5 p.m., DNT Newsroom brings you the most topical, fact-based and up-to-date news from Ghana and around the world. Politics, business, sports and news from the diaspora all covered in this comprehensive news update. If it matters, DNT Newsroom will have it covered. DNT News, be informed. Welcome back. This is Diaspora Weekly. This is where we engage the stakeholders of this country regarding how we rope the diaspora in uh, towards nation building. I'm delighted to be joining the station in the studio by the one and only Otiko. <laughs> oh, wait, I have to call, I have to <laughs> be right, because you know what, uh, l let me go back. In the, in, the, in the world right now, some of the best people are represented by just one name, mm -hmm. like Madonna. Mm -hmm. And so, so mm -hmm. when you say Otiko, we don't need to say the rest. <laughs> but for now, we have to say Dr. Mm -hmm. Otiko Afisa Jabba. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Doctor, it <laughs> sounds great. Absolutely. Tell me about it. Welcome. First of all, welcome. I, I, no, I got to get used to mm -hmm. Dr. Otiko Afisa. That makes two of us. Yeah, because I'm not used to it either. I know. It How was did such that a surprise. About? Okay. Um, there's a group called um, the Alfred Nobel mm -hmm. University okay. of Ukraine. Okay. And they go around identifying people across Africa okay. who are doing humanitarian works and okay. stuff like that. And they work in uh, collaboration with another organization called 
excellent achievement okay. at African heroes Very good. who are working with uh, the UN, AU, identifying projects and people who are involved in um, humanitarian activities. Uh, okay. Celeb Johnson was given uh, a doctorate Shelef as well. Johnson, okay. Yeah, it's an honorary doctorate. doctorate okay. And so I was surprised when I was called that wow. I had been nominated wow. for this uh, honorary doctorate wow. for humanitarian leadership in wow. Ghana. Okay. And so they came on the 29th of uh, June okay. from Ukraine okay. and it was done at the University of Ghana with oh, okay. seven other people. Not just me, yes. That was interesting. To, when he sent it yeah. to me, I, I called. We, do, we actually have a, a global, one of our global correspondents in mm -hmm. uh, Ukraine. Okay. And so when he sent me that message, I yeah. quickly called her. I said, make sure she doesn't leave Ukraine until you interview her. <laughs> I was here in Ghana. <laughs> exactly. They came down. Wow. Yeah. So how did it go? It went well. Okay. And I was so humbled. Okay. and inspired yeah. that anybody would recognize the little that I'm doing. Little? Yes. Let's talk about uh, that. Little. Little. Well, let's, let's, let's look yeah. at your resume. Mm. Uh, National Women's Organizer for <laughs> the largest <laughs> party in Ghana, mm. um, Minister of Gender and Children, mm -hmm. which is no small feat, mm -hmm. considering that women makes about, what, 51.2% Fif of... Mm -hmm. And you did a fantastic job of that, I must say. <sighs> Thank so you. some mm. of us would take an issue with mm. you characterizing what you do as little. Well, that's my widow's might. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So let's start you from uh, when you say little. Mm. I, I have a feeling that if we want to go back to some of the things that you've done that brought you here, we'll be mm. talking for a long time. But <laughs> I can't help it. Mm. My viewers want to know, mm. what was it like? Your experiences as a minister and all mm. that stuff. What was it like? Really they can like Google me and they'll see all the things <laughs> oh, that I did on Google. Okay. The things that matter to me mm -hmm. are the development of our people. Okay. I love Ghana. I believe in Ghana. Okay. And so at a very early age, I created a program called Kokroku okay. for children. Okay. And we used television to educate children and uh, their parents mm -hmm. how to learn through play. I called it the poor woman's version of Sesame Street. Oh. Yes. And That's um, interesting. The poor woman's version of Sesame, of Sesame Street. Sesame Street, yes. All right. We Note learned that. through play. Okay. And I created a character called the mom on call. And I was the mom on call. Okay. And a character called Anansi, Yasantua, okay. Savannah. Right. And they uh, learned through play how to read, how to write, take uh, excursions, just learning through play. Okay. And uh, it was one of the most popular programs wow. for children in wow. Ghana. And that took me around Ghana, and I realized that I didn't want to be in television. Okay. I wanted to be in development. Okay. So I wrote another program for working with children in very deprived communities okay. and how to make a difference in their lives. Okay. And that took me to Tumu, to Wa, to work in 98 communities with Plan Ghana. Okay. There is nothing like working in an area where you have a passion. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You know, it, it, they, they say some people when they're looking for what to do, it's like, okay, what brings in the most money? Mm. Or but when you when you work in an area where you have the most passion, mm -hmm. you, you you don't need to be you, you don't need to be paid. You just yeah. do it because mm -hmm. you like mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you've been in ch this children business for a while. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Quite a, yeah, I'm 57 now, so okay. for the last about... 50 what? I'm 57 now. Okay, now wait a minute. <laughs> you have your driver license here? <laughs> now we have to check that. No, age is not a number that you just pick. Yeah. You just mm. have to prove it. Yeah. 57, y'all Y'all need to look. Look, <laughs> put a camera on her. Let's see if that looks like a 50, 57. I can feel it in my knees <laughs> <laughs> when I wake up in the morning. Okay. I feel my age. Yeah. Very good. So, um... This is Diaspora Weekly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we bring in diaspora and stakeholders. Mm. When you hear the name Otiko Afisa Japa, now Doctor Otiko Japa, <laughs> not too many people will associate you with diaspora. Mm, mm, mm. Are you a diaspora? <laughs> to be honest, mm -hmm. I don't see myself as a diasporian. However. Mm -hmm. My father had to live outside Ghana in England mm -hmm. um, in exile. Mm -hmm. And so when I turned 16 after my O-levels, I had to go live with him in England. Okay. And so 
when you migrate, that's what being a diaspora is, okay. and uh, an African diaspora or a Ghanaian diaspora. Okay. It just means that you've moved away from where you were an indigi, where you were born, your mm -hmm. hometown, mm -hmm. and you're living outside that country. But, Not like when you are in Tamale and you move to Accra, of course. but when you over across the seas, mm -hmm. yes. So living outside mm -hmm. for close to 10 years okay. then made me a diasporan. Okay. But I returned to Ghana. My mother didn't want me to get married outside Ghana. Okay. So when I turned 21, she wanted me to come back. She said out there, everybody wears a suit and holds a briefcase. <laughs> you don't know where they are coming from or wow. their background wow. so come back home and i did so okay. i came back got married had two children and then my husband then wanted to do his specialization so we went back lived again outside ghana for about another six years oh wow and then came back again so six uh, the first time was how many about years about 10 years 10 six. and six yeah. that's 16. yeah Mm. That makes you a diaspora. <laughs> you have well. folks who call themselves diaspora <laughs> who probably lived there for two years. When uh -huh. they come back, say, "Yeah, I'm portrayed there." So you yeah. say, "But I don't see that <laughs> with you." I you, love Ghana. Yeah, I love Ghana. And, and you see, I think it, it's mm. a mindset thing because when you, you know, when we set this up, mm. most of the people that you would associate with diaspora. When you mentioned Otunfo, for example, mm -hmm. I had one of the kids say, Otunfo is not a diaspora, but he's a diaspora. Yeah. And so you, 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 made, you gave the best description. You've left your comfort zone, your, your mm. country where you were born, yeah. and you've domiciled in another country, mm. and you've come back. Mm. So when you're coming back, you're bringing something with you. Definitely. What would you say you brought with you? I brought back new knowledge. Okay. Um, when I went out there, I studied secretaryship, I studied IT, and then I learned how to be more time conscious, okay. being disciplined about your time. And so coming back home, I brought all those things to bear. Okay. The experiences I learned out there became a part of who I am. Okay. And uh, I wanted my Ghanaianness to dominate my life. Okay. And that's why I, want, I came back home. Okay. And uh, I, like I said, I developed a television program mm -hmm. for, for children. Okay. And uh, perhaps if I hadn't lived outside, because mm -hmm. I didn't study television. Right. I then had had my son who was about six months old. Mm -hmm. And I found that there wasn't anything interesting. Okay. So I jazzed up this program called Kukuru. The Kukuru. And you use right. everyday learning activities yeah. to teach a child. Okay. And that became a way of life for me. Okay. And it became a profession. So now when you say the stuff that that you pick from there included be on time. Yeah, it may and be more that. disciplined. Okay. Yeah. You, we know these things. We teach those things here in school. Mm. So why can't we learn those things here? Why do we have to go up there uh, somewhere to mm. learn it and then bring them back? Um, the Ghanaian wants to take advantage of mm -hmm. things. Okay. If you don't enforce laws, that's what happens. Yeah. It increases in discipline. And so in out, at outside, you have to clock in. Mm -hmm. And if you don't go to work, you don't get paid. <laughs> don't get paid. Yeah, so you can't get up and go for Can a funeral. Can you imagine people having to clock in yeah. here? And so Friday, oh, me kwe ye, oh, me mame ya, all those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. You can't just do that. Okay. And so you know that and you're paid by the hour. Yeah. Especially when you're doing temporary work. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't go to work, you can't pay your rent. You okay. can't uh, pay your school fees. Okay. I had to go and do waitressing, do asherets, clean up places mm -hmm. to be able to buy my bus pass, right. pay my rent and uh, pay my fees. Right. And so if you don't go work, you will not get paid. And nobody's going to pay you to get up and be going for a funeral on Thursdays, yeah. come back to work on yeah, Monday. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just drive how you like. Some yeah. The camera will stop you. Okay. <laughs> you know? so, so then here is yeah. my, my question. If you ask the average, and when you go to American embassy, you see them queuing for mm -hmm. visa. Same yeah. with every other embassy here. Mm. We aspire for the great things. Mm -hmm. But yet, we don't want to go through the changes to turn this place to look like those plays. Yeah. Why? It seemed like it's mm. very simple. If I want a clean house, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I sweep my house. Yeah. If I want to feed myself, I plant and I eat. But if I want Ghana to look like uh, 
uh, abroad, mm -hmm. Singapore. there are some mm -hmm. specific things we need to do. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we're not willing to do that, but yet we want to go sleep at night and when we wake up, voila, this place is like overseas. Why? What, 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 what does it tell I, you about that? My personal take is that um, we've lost our sense of patriotism. Okay. Of who we are as Ghanaians. Okay. Ghanaians are very clean people to start yeah. with. When I was growing up, there was the Sama Sama. <laughs> and I remember any time he was coming, people would be running. You have to scrap the, I didn't know, the, yeah. the mortar, the yeah. pistol, uh. even the pots. Those days, we didn't have fridges. Yeah. And so, cleaning oh, around. You were talking about tankers for? Yeah, we used to call them Sama Sama. Sama, Sama. Okay. Yes, and he's coming. Okay. You wouldn't dare throw litter. Yeah. What they will do, because the law worked. I know. Uh -huh. You now, know what I'm laughing? <laughs> it took me a long time. Yeah. We used to call them tankers for. Mm -hmm. it, it took me a long time to find out that it was actually members from the town council. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so they are short tanka, into tankers. Tankers for yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, but go it's ahead. Like buffalo loaves, we call them both fruit here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's part of it. Mm -hmm. That um, the enforcement of the law yeah. is very poor. Okay, so and why are we not enforcing the law? It, because the engineering is not there. Okay. If you want people not to litter. Mm -hmm. Then you have to provide dustbins every mm -hmm. few minutes, every mm -hmm. few yards, mm -hmm. litter bins, and then dustbins in the homes for somebody to collect them, the collection of waste. Mm -hmm. Because Ghana has moved yeah. from having, um, eating just your contumbre and mm -hmm. things. Now, people are using these takeaway, the black mm -hmm. polythene bags. Mm -hmm. we, that's part of the risk of development. Yeah. We are using bottled water. Mm -hmm. We used to drink from the calabash. So are you going to throw your calabash away? Okay, some will <laughs> say if I put the trash can here, yeah. Folks steal them. Somebody must make sure that nobody steals it, mm -hmm. and somebody must make sure that it is empty. Secured. Yes, and it is emptied because sometimes the bin on the street, the litter bin, mm -hmm. people will package their rubbish from their homes and bring it out yeah. there because nobody is collecting the rubbish from the home. Yeah. And then the litter one too will be, they begin stacking. Okay. And it becomes an eyesore. Yeah. So when you're talking about keeping the place clean, mm -hmm. you have to look at the education okay. and look at the engineering okay. and then the enforcement. Okay. If I need to wee-wee and there is no place yeah. to wee-wee, I'm going to do it outside okay. because I'm not going to keep so it until I get to wherever there's right. a washroom. So you just mentioned three things. Yeah. yeah. Education, engineering, and, and the, the third enforcement. And enforcement. Mm. Okay. Let's go for a short break. When mm. we come back, we're yeah. going to dig into those things in detail. Mm. You're watching Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah. I'm here with uh, Dr. Otiko Afisai <laughs> Chapa. I got to get used to that. I have we'll be to right get back. used to it as well. <laughs> My name is Novi. The name is Phil. The man is the name. Laugh. And learn. Biggest animal in the world. King Kong. What's the name of the eye in iPhone? Netus. What is Facebook? It's a book that you see it on your face. <laughs> what is the last book of the Bible? Methodist. Your father is a landlord. What will you be? Land commission. House owner. Land rover. What do we do at a grocery shop? They play football. Who is Santa Claus? The teacher will trade you. <laughs> Welcome to Diaspora Weekly. Uh, you're with Jermaine and Krumah here with uh, Dr. Otiko Afi Sejaba. Mm. Uh, before we went on break, you talked about three things. Mm -hmm. Education, engineering, and, and uh, enforcement. Enforcement, yeah. Let me pick up on the education piece. Mm. Because when you talk about uh, engineering, oh, money, 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 enforcement, oh, the police are so... So let's start with education. <laughs> we have... I mean, we have a literacy rate which is a bit low, but mm. compared to our friends, uh, neighbors in Africa, we're relatively high. Mm. So when you talk about education, most people will tell you, well, we have degree holders, uh, they're, they're even the world's corporates. Mm -hmm. So is that the problem? It's part of it. Okay. You can't have enough of education. And until 
the message gets home that people will not just eat yogurt or drink water and drop it on the streets. Okay. That people will continue to need sensitization okay. on the issue okay. until change comes. It's like when we were driving left-handed mm -hmm. and then we wanted to go right. You have to do a lot of education for people Fourth to know. Fourth August 1974, Aha. I remember that. Exactly, yeah. until we get it right. Mm -hmm. There was a time that we used to think that it was okay to marry off little girls child marriage mm -hmm. is still a problem in Ghana wow yes and so we've been talking about ending child marriage now the prevalence is reducing okay. like FGM okay. the prevalence is reducing but it's not zero yet okay uh -huh. so for as long as the issue is negative and it's still affecting you still your need people education. you still need education and I might also add that for me personally mm. I started my university education back in the States and mm. I went up to get my master's and everything but I, I would say about 80% of what I call what educated Jermaine and Chroma mm. I obtained from outside the classroom yeah you know mm. and so I think you you you're looking let me let me just say this when we talk about cleanliness all right mm. let's say this uh, young young lady she's frying uh, Kelly Willie here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Her mother was frying Kelewele at that same location. Her mm. grandmother was frying that all her life. That's what she knows. That's the picture in her mind. Yeah. So when you come and you tell this person, why are you frying Kelewele here? Don't you know it's dirty? By the gutter. He, she cannot understand you. Mm -hmm. Because you are looking at it from the perspective of where Kelewele or food like that is prepared mm -hmm. it abroad. Yeah. And so when you when you come back, you have to take your time mm. to say, so, so gutter, this is the gutter, this mm. is so and so. Mm. When you do this and this is what's happened. That's mm -hmm. how you take them from there. <laughs> you can't do that in a classroom. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes that education. Yeah, so that's why experience. it's... And, yeah. and so would you say that is why those of us who were fortunate enough to leave mm. and stay, look at other economies and societies, mm. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we're bringing those lenses with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we see things and they, they stick out as us and those who have been around will mm -hmm. not see it. Mm -hmm. Well, travel in itself is an education. Mm -hmm. And definitely when you go out, you learn new things and mm -hmm. you'll want to see change. Right. However, change doesn't come in one day. Okay. That's development. It takes time. Okay. And when you're changing attitudes, yeah. you have to keep drumming it in. Okay. And then as you're drumming it in, you have to bring about the structures. Okay. Like having toilets, having dustbins, having washrooms nearby. Okay. So that people will not go free ranging or doing it in the middle tin and throwing it in the gutters. Okay. You have to have a sewage system that okay. you can have the gutters closed. Okay. Yeah. So that's why it goes hand in hand. They call the three E's. Okay. And then you need to enforce. Right. Because if you are educating mm -hmm. and you have the structures and you are not enforcing, you still have the problem. Yeah. In Singapore, you can't even chew gum and uh, stick it somewhere. No, 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 you no. wouldn't dare. Yeah. And now, everybody's, there's somebody from somebody's family who has traveled outside. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we don't know. We uh -huh. know. Is and we don't like it because we keep talking about the debt. The debt. Yeah. But we must be patriotic. Okay. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Yeah. And this is our Ghana. Okay. This is our yeah. time yeah. to change what we don't like. Okay. So if you do your bit by not throwing something where it shouldn't be, okay. if you do your bit as somebody who removes the rubbish from the gutter, mm -hmm. you shouldn't leave it on the side of the gutter. Yeah. You should actually carry it to another location. Okay. Because when you leave it at the side and the wind blows, it all goes back in. It's useless work yeah. that you've done. Yeah. So we have to believe that this is our Ghana. Yeah. This is my community. I yeah. don't want it to be dirty. You know, so I have to work at in, it. In listening to you, something just occurred to me. And look, w w if you take 10 women mm. that go abroad, mm -hmm. you take 10 men that go abroad, probably 80% of the men mm -hmm. aspire to come back home at some point. Mm. But the women, you probably get four mm. to come back. You are actually out of... The really? norm, yes, Ooh. because Ghanaians who travel, yeah, more uh, more men return than women. Okay, I didn't some, know that. Some people have given us uh, the reason for mm. that. But in in talking with you, and what I'm getting is, you know, it takes 
w women nurture. Mm -hmm. You know, when they talk about community and how mm -hmm. to improve community, when we men, we come back, we just mm -hmm. want to come make money, okay? <laughs> and so could it be the reason why when we come back, mm -hmm. the education piece is missing? We men, when mm -hmm. we come back, oh, why are you doing this? You, we, mm -hmm. Whereas a woman will have time to actually take the person through mm -hmm. what you just did. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, why is it that more women don't come back? I honestly don't know, but uh, I never wanted to live outside Ghana for the rest of my life. For me, I always felt that it was temporary. Okay. And I never naturalized. Okay. I made sure that my children that I gave birth to, they, that I brought them back home early okay. for them to learn about their Ghanaianness. For okay. me, it's so important to be a Ghanaian. Oh, right. Yeah. And... Um, we need to speak our language to our children from the time they are born, wherever we are. Okay. I used to speak Gonja to my children. So all four of my children speak Gonja. Okay. And when they got back to school, wherever we were, they picked the chi and mm -hmm. the ga or whatever language was there. Mm -hmm. And that is very important that we should be patriotic. Yeah. Oh, wherever you are, learn that it's the, the best thing in the best place is Ghana. Yes. Don't mind the mosquitoes yeah. and all of that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so... Whether more women come back or not, mm -hmm. whoever comes back, mm -hmm. we need to come and add value yeah. to this so country. So it didn't and matter it to you. It didn't matter to you that um, if some of the theories that I've heard mm. was that this place is a very masculine society. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, I, I mean, now it's changing. But in the past, <laughs> in the past, it's like <laughs> if, if you're married, uh, mm. the wife pretty much, the, the man was king of it's the house. It's a male dominant okay, society. Fine. Yeah. And then, if you, so the theory that I've heard is that if a woman had the opportunity to go to where mm -hmm. now she has 50%, she knows her rights. the man mm. has 50%, it's very difficult to return mm. to an environment where now mm. the, the man is saying sit and you have to sit. Mm -hmm. is that be pl could that be playing a role? Oh, no man but would you me to say <laughs> I, I know, would you, it might not, um, not have played a role, but I've heard theories that mm. uh, women, especially in America, they're not in a hurry to come back because really? the rights that they enjoy there mm. is much more valuable than here. I don't know about that. Life <laughs> is what you make it. Uh -huh. And um, my personal belief is that what you don't like, you change it. Yeah. And you might not necessarily, if you're married to somebody, you can't force them. Mm -hmm. But you find ways okay. of effecting the kind of change, change that, that you, you want. want. Oh. When I lived in Ghana, my, I'm divorced now. My former husband, he used to bath the children mm -hmm. because we both worked. In Ghana? Yes, here in Ghana. Wow. But when his mother was coming to visit, he wouldn't. <laughs> because he says that in his village, men don't bath um, okay. children. Okay. And when we lived in England, he used to bath the children and okay. stuff. Yeah. That. Yeah. But it's all about how you relate to each other and the compromises that you make mm -hmm. and um, understanding. Nobody is perfect, but um, home is the best place. And for me, Ghana is the best place on earth. Good. And I think that anybody who goes out of Ghana should come back okay. and add. Okay. Some people have died for you and I to be enjoying Ghana. So we must also contribute our right. quota. Wherever you are, come back home the good and news, contribute a little. The good news is, according to our own polling, yeah, eighty percent of Ghanaians mm -hmm. at some point want to come back home. So that's mm -hmm. the good news. Yeah. The not so great news is when they come back, mm. assimilating back into the society. Yeah, that's tough. And sixty percent of them want to open their own business, mm -hmm. but when they come back, mm. the problems they face. Yeah. Is Ghana ready to receive her diaspora? It's as ready as you are to come. Okay. Why did you leave in the first place? Okay. Yeah. Life is not easy anyway. Okay. And so if you've come back, you don't expect that people are just going to open doors for you okay. just because you've gone to Abruzzi. Okay. Yeah. By the time you come back, your mates have gone up in some levels. Mm -hmm. And so you have to find your way of doing things. Talking about opening doors. Mm. I was once walking into a restaurant. Mm -hmm. There was a white couple in front of me. Mm. And a security man, the, oh, yes, sir. They opened the door for them. Mm -hmm. They entered. I was a few steps behind. Mm -hmm. I get there, and the dr guy just greeted me and stood there for me to open my own door. Mm -hmm. From a business standpoint, 
<laughs> some will tell you that the the Turkish guy, the mm -hmm. American, the Chinese, when they come mm -hmm. there, people do open doors for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm bringing the same amount of dollars. Why can't you <laughs> open the door for me? He's not well trained. That's why he doesn't understand, and I, he's not well trained because most hotels and restaurants, uh -huh. the person at the door always opens the door for anybody, irrespective right. of color. For right. this person to do that is his ignorance. Yeah, but I was saying that mm. in a business sense, yeah. the kind of um, leeways that of we course. give to yeah. foreign investors, mm, mm, we don't mm. give to our own investors. Yes, it's one way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah. But like I said... Meanwhile, a dollar is a dollar. Yeah. It, it doesn't have a white it's, man's name written on it. Life is not easy. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're, you're traveling out of Ghana somewhere else, mm -hmm. when you got there initially, you had similar problems, mm -hmm. assimilating, mm -hmm. getting yourself included in things like that. Mm -hmm. So when you come back again, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. You are a different person from who you were. Mm -hmm. And life has moved on. Mm -hmm. And so you have to learn the terrain. Mm -hmm. And then find out where you can get what you want and how to do things the Ghanaian way. Mm -hmm. There's something called African time. There is no African time. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to be on time, you can't say that um, because of traffic, or I'm now eating my banku before I go. Yeah. So you get there on time. Yeah. And so you might find that other people are getting there late. That shouldn't stop you from being on time. Okay. So okay. you have brought new added value. Okay. And you want to change your environment. Right. And so when people realize that you are punctual, mm -hmm. they'll start coming there okay. you know, on so time. So I get that. I get yeah. that. But here's uh, right now, and I know of a lady who mm -hmm. bought land. Mm -hmm. She lives in Houston. Yeah. She bought the land. She has all the paperwork and everything. Mm -hmm. But because she doesn't live here, and, and she actually constructed something on it. Mm. This guy from nowhere comes in, mm -hmm. takes the land and starts mm -hmm. with the understanding that, mm -hmm. oh, even when he co goes to court, she's mm -hmm. not going to have time to come and go. Uh -huh. And you know the court system. Mm -hmm. they, and so when we did our polling, impunity mm -hmm. is not a big mm -hmm. problem why people don't want to come back. Mm -hmm. Even though I did say that, yeah, in some cases, yeah, people might want the same door open for them like mm -hmm. they do with the mm -hmm. wife. And we mm -hmm. understand that this is our country, and yes, we have to come in and mm. hurt. But if I come and someone it's takes my land, you. right? You find ways to deal with it. But I live in America. Yeah, come and stay here. I and know, find but I'm <laughs> preparing to come. I want to build yeah, my house before I come. Uh, uh, uh. But the land that I bought, somebody mm -hmm. has taken mm -hmm. it. It went to court. Now I have to make 10 trips no, because no, of no. Po postponement. <laughs> so the very first thing that I'm trying yeah. to do, I okay. run into problems. Mm. How is that encouragement for me to come back and put a yeah. factory here? When you're going out, mm -hmm. mentally have an umbrella mm -hmm. that anything can go bad. Okay. And land issues are terrible here in Ghana. And I understand the frustrations, but I'm saying that you deal with the frustrations and so you find a good lawyer you find a good friend if you don't have the time to be here all the time who will fight that case for you so or my you go question and take is, leave isn't and it come. easier mm -hmm. Not isn't it come. easier for the government with to do you you just mentioned their <laughs> land issue it seemed like it'd be easier for the government to fix the land issue so mm. that not only diasporans but mm. anybody who buys land won't have to go through that and for diasporans, these are the things that they are asking for. Mm. Don't give us anything special. Mm. Fix the things yeah. so that when we come, we, mm. can, we can do the struggle. Yeah, you have to come and help to fix the things. Because mm -hmm. these land issues are not just affecting only diasporans. It affects anybody. Oh, because it, okay. uh, people sell land and they resell to different people. Mm -hmm. Because um, wherever it is that you want the land, others also want that place. Mm -hmm. It is not right, it's mm -hmm. not legal, mm -hmm. because you might have the documents, mm -hmm. but if you're not here, you might lose your money and the property. Okay. And so you have to find ways Please. to manage it, because this is your country. Okay. And if the structures <laughs> are not working, come right. home and help to make them work. How about this? You can't this? sit there and expect somebody else to All do right. the work for you. Before, to we, before we go Honky on break. Work, baboon they chop. You know before, they happen. Before we go on break. <laughs> How about this? Yeah. We bring in the ideas, mm -hmm. like some of the things that you brought mm -hmm. from UK. Mm -hmm. When you bring the ideas, <laughs> first, oh, why didn't they get more? How about that? And somebody will steal the idea. <laughs> when I wanted to do Kokroko, somebody yeah. said to me, oh, look, 
behind me. I have all these tapes that I want to put on TV. You've just come from Abruzzo. You think that you are the only one with ideas. Yeah. But I stuck to it. I wore my shoes off. I worked and I got the pilot done. And I got Nestle to sponsor it. And I want to say a shout out to Nestle for giving me that opportunity. It's about perseverance. Wherever you, whatever you want to do, somebody is going to try and stop you, whether you, you are in Ghana well, or not. You have to focus very well, and persevere. Very well put, because I can tell you this. When I came back and I wanted to put DNT together, it wasn't easy. Ah. But I'm sticking with it. So ah. according to it, I'm trying to make the excuses for you. <laughs> But uh, Otiko, the doctor no Otiko excuse. is not having it. No. You need to come back if you're yeah. listening to us and you're mm -hmm. in the diaspora. We'll go on a quick break. <laughs> when we come back, we'll delve into some, yeah. some stuff. Stay tuned. where we dive into the perspective of the diaspora in and out of Ghana. It's fun, engaging, and motivational. I think Ghana is, is a wonderful place. I love Ghana, I truly do. We need our diasporans for our country to develop to where it should be. Hey! <laughs> Come on, turn around. Turn around, let me see. <laughs> Make a date with me right here on DNT every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Homeland. Brain drain, brain gain. Hello, my name is Kofi Opon Ochre, and I bring you NASA on DNT, a program designed to expose corruption and indiscipline in our society and advocate for the punishment of these offenders whose activities impede national development. The National Road Safety Commission indicates that Ghana loses 230 million US dollars to road accident, with over 1,600 dead recorded every year. In 2018, Shraj report indicated that Ghana loses 13.5 billion Ghana cities to corruption. A United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF has also stated that Ghana loses 290 million US dollars to poor sanitation alone. This is not right. So make a date with me, and together let's name and shame the offenders of the law. NASA, see something, say something. Thank you and welcome back to Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah. Again, you're, uh, I'm joined by Dr. <laughs> Otiko. Otiko Afisa Java. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk next about two things that I know you're passionate about. Mm. And we're going to mirror those into how things are from where you came a mm. long time ago and here. Yeah. Children's welfare. Let mm. me start with that. Yeah. Do we treat children right mm. in this country? You've touched my heart. <laughs> yes, I'm a children's rights consultant. Mm -hmm. We don't treat children with respect in Ghana. When you look at the pyramid, of development the men are up there and everybody else then you have women at the bottom and then children and then persons with disability and so even though we've sen signed the um, children's rights act mm -hmm. 560 since 1998 we don't respect children we see children as charlatans we see children as property we see children as a nuisance as Me burdens. meanwhile we were all children at some point <laughs> everybody was born yes. a child You're yes right. but we forget as we grow up mm -hmm. and it's important that we believe and understand that children have human rights just like us mm -hmm. and they should be treated with respect yes. they should go to school they should stay in school is the responsibility of the parent to educate the child. No child has ever asked to be born. Mm -hmm. And so no child should be a breadwinner. Hey, you just told me something, eh? Mm -hmm. Otiko, you just told me something. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I have my prob uh, problems with my children, yeah. that's the first thing. Yeah. They didn't ask to be born. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said that to my I mom. I could not say that to my oh, dad. Oh, I did. <laughs> the kind of slaps that you get <laughs> when we were growing. I was born so, knowing but, my rights. But it's true. <laughs> These children yeah. did not ask to be born. No, no, no. Mm. So if you want to go through the pleasures, I might mm -hmm. uh, under uh, the pleasures that mm. precede childbirth, mm. 
Yeah. You need to understand that it is a responsibility coming. So why do you yeah. think in Ghana we take it so laxly? Part of it is ignorance. Part of it is poverty. Mm -hmm. um, ignorance because we don't understand that a child is a gift of God. It's a precious gift. Look at the people who can't have children, what they go through. Mm -hmm. In-laws will come and sack you from the home and all of that. Wow. So why would you have this treasure uh -huh. and mistreat it? Yes. It's because you have not appreciated the treasure. A child is a treasure from God mm -hmm. for that child to come and make you happy. Yeah. But childhood is only 18 years. I know. And then after that, they can go off yeah. and live their own lives. Yeah. So you're just a caretaker for God. Okay. And if you understood that mm -hmm. it's a gift that you have to treat, you treat gifts with responsibility, okay. with seriousness. So and that is what we need to encourage parents to learn that a child is a gift. Okay. And you have to treat it and manage it and nurture it and grow it. So I want to do that. Mm. But there are some circumstances that are preventing sure, you from the poverty. Doing that. Mm. Poverty is one. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the I'm, I'm mad at the mother. Mm. So and the mother yeah. and I are no longer there. So mm -hmm. that's just irresponsibility and negligence. <laughs> Yeah, being mad at the mother doesn't make you mad at the mad child. At the, yes. Yeah. So the it's child should pay for the price of no the pay, child uh, pays the for the sin for of the father or the mother. Okay. What about mothers mm -hmm. who use the child as tool to get to the father? That's also irresponsibility. You okay. shouldn't do that. The child is not a bargaining chip. The child is not yours. Yes. The child is a gift. And the child oh, belongs to the community. gift is mine. You've already given it to me, so it's mine. You're only taking care of it for a while. You're ah, a caretaker. That child okay. is going to grow into an adult, uh -huh. and you need a succession plan. Okay. And so poverty is not an excuse not okay. to take good care of your child. Okay. So what should be done about it? What should be done is mm -hmm. that we need to love our children. What you didn't get from your parents, you make sure that your child gets it. It doesn't mean you should spoil the child. What if I don't do it? Does that enforcement thing that you were talking about come The in? child has a right that it should be done, but it's not being enforced. And so the government brings in programs like um, free SHS, mm -hmm. like making sure that there is a school feeding, mm -hmm. um, the children's rights, the welfare policy for children and what have you. And so there are lots of structures and policies to protect children, but the enforcement is lacking. And so if a, a parent doesn't send the child to school, mm -hmm. social welfare are supposed to go and make sure that that child is in school. Okay. But the social welfare, uh -huh. they don't have enough workers. What about the guy who can barely feed himself but has 10 children? Who asked should you to have those 10 children? That is your problem. Okay. You should Wait, so, feed them so all. Now My father had 22 children. Okay. And he fed but us he, all. Yeah. But you have people who can barely feed themselves, but they have children everywhere. Should there be a policy against that? Especially when you put it vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, put it within the context of the what is a seeming population explosion in Africa. You cannot have a policy... Mm -hmm for how many children somebody will have, especially in a country where we have polygamy and the- uh, China did it. We One are able to, that's China, this them. is Ghana. Okay. We are contending with all sorts of competing needs. Okay. The important thing right now mm -hmm. is how do you make sure that those families can educate their children? Okay. They can feed themselves. Okay. Um, like I said, my father had 22 children and we were not hungry. Okay. And when it got to a time when he could no longer feed us, we went to work. Okay. You know, like I told you, I used to do waitressing. Mm -hmm cleaning up people's houses and things like that. You will still a sense the of values yes. and discipline and letting your children know that, look, I might have today, I might not have tomorrow. Okay. What I don't have, I can't steal for you. Okay. So you should be content with what you have. It is here with Gary, near your bedroom, you should go to work. Uh, yes, and so when you teach your children that, mm -hmm. they will learn how to be accommodating okay. so that they are not going to be asking you for a car when they know that you can't no, even you give them a, a chicken. And so it's also important how parents educate their children in terms of values okay. and the things that matter. Love, it's the most important thing. When you love your child, mm -hmm. even when you can't clothe that child, that child is happy to All be right. with you. Talking about love, let me transition to a, another area that you and I are both passionate about. And the Bible says, love thy neighbor and mm -hmm. thyself. Yeah. Okay, that's the biblical perspective. Mm. And the diaspora perspective is this. Mm. I'm black. I go to America. 
and the white man is discriminating against me and I'm so angry. <laughs> oh, you, we are all the same. Mm. But there's a clear difference between the color of my skin and the color of his skin. Yeah. But I don't think he should discriminate against me. Mm -hmm. I think it's wrong. Mm -hmm. But I come back home mm. to Ghana mm -hmm. where everybody looks the same. Mm -hmm. But it's okay for me to say, oh, I'm an Asante, look at Ewe guy, look at uh, mm, uh, Gabriel. Yeah. Mm. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because some people are intolerant. Uh -huh. It shouldn't happen. There's no excuse for that. Mm -hmm. For anybody to discriminate against another. Yeah. Because everybody's blood is red. Yes. And Sabi, everybody goes to the toilet and it stinks. Mm -hmm. And so, you're not better than me. Mm hmm it doesn't matter that maybe you are wealthier, maybe you are better educated. We are human beings. Yes. And human beings must respect each other yes. because we are human beings. Yes. People who treat people badly because of anything yes. is because they are scared. They are bullies. Yeah. They are inadequate. Yeah. When you see a bully, he's frightened of something. That's why he's bullying mm, somebody. Mm, mm. There's, the uh, there's somebody in America that I want to say his name so bad, but I'm not going to yeah, go there. The same thing to do with discrimination. Okay. If anybody discriminates against you because you're too short or you're too tall or you're too this or too that, it's because they're scared of what you are yeah. and what you represent. Yeah. And you don't allow them to do that. Okay. You need to stop them and say, look here, okay. this is not right. right. You cannot treat me this way because I'm a woman. Yeah. Or because I'm a child or because okay. I'm a person with disability. Yeah. We are diverse and okay. we need to be tolerant. Yeah. Ghana, we say akwaba. Yeah. And so we mu it oh. must be a reality. But every Sunday we go sit in a church and praise God. <laughs> That's just hypocrisy. Going to God, church I love make you. you a Christian. God, I love you. Hallelujah. <laughs> And the Bible says, <laughs> love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. God created us in his image. Mm. But have you seen God before? Mm -mm. You feel God. But mm -hmm. God has created us in his image, yeah. a fellow human being mm. in his image. Yeah. I love God. I haven't seen God. So when I see you, what have I seen? Mm. You've I've seen, seen God. God. Mm -hmm. So why is it so easy to love God, mm -hmm. but to hate another person because he or she is from a different tribe. Because you're scared of the person. You are jealous of the person. For me, All I, sorts think, of th reasons. I, I think it shows intellectual deficit. Well, that could also be part of it. But I think that all those things can change. Okay. And it's from how we, if you're being discriminated at, mm -hmm. you must not allow it. Okay. And then you must not retaliate. Okay. You must show the show person love. by example. Okay. Show them love. I work with a lot of people with disability who are treated badly because they are persons with disability. Okay. And oh. so you have to learn how to manage that okay. situation. Okay. A friend of mine came from his Australia and saw on the taxis, on mm -hmm. cars and buildings, oh, Nyame, oh, God bless this. <laughs> and I, he said, hey, you are a very religious country. Yeah. Until he went somewhere and he was robbed. And, and then he realized that it, it was not like no, that. No, it's not. <laughs> and so when you are coming home, mm -hmm. you need to be for look sharp. Okay. Well, I'm telling you, this conversation can go on and on and on, but we still have to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about disabilities, persons with disabilities. Mm. Stay tuned, please. where we dive into the perspective of the diaspora in and out of Ghana. It's fun, engaging, and motivational. I think Ghana is, is a wonderful place. I love Ghana. I truly do. We need our diasporans for our country to develop to where it should be. Hey! <laughs> Come on, turn around. Turn around, let me see. <laughs> Make a date with me right here on DNT every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Homeland. Brain drain, brain gain. Every weekday at 12 and 5 p.m., DNT Newsroom brings you the most topical, fact based, and up to date news from Ghana and around the world. Politics, business, Sports and news from the diaspora all covered in this comprehensive news update. If 
it matters, DNT News will have it covered. DNT News, be informed. Welcome back to Diaspora Weekly, uh, where we engage stakeholders. My guest today is Dr. Tiko Afisa Jabba. Uh, before we went on break, we were talking about um, uh, tribalism issues and how much it's, uh, it's really repulsive. Uh, in fact, I personally think it shows intellectual deficit. But there's another type of discrimination that um, uh, we want to touch on that received very little attention in this country, and that's uh, dis discriminating against persons with disability. Mm, mm. Otiko. Yeah. Persons with disability. Mm. Now, before we go, and there is some funny news that came from uh, this, this, part, this week, last week. Mm -hmm. The World Health Organization yeah. is going to characterize, you ready for this? Mm -hmm inability to have a sex partner for 12 months will be characterized as disability. Really? So are they trivializing what is a disability? Oh, I haven't <laughs> thought about it. But um, they would have to go and do the research and yeah. what have you. Yeah. For me, uh, issues of disability are very critical that we are, have a better understanding because mm -hmm. anybody can be a person with disability. Yeah. You can be born with a disability. Yes. You can have an accident. An ailment like um, diabetes mm -hmm. can make can you a person, a or stroke can yeah. make you a person with disability. Yeah. Uh, cerebral palsy, um, yeah. Down syndrome, what have you. And so, because it can happen to anybody, we all need to be aware of it and to change our attitudes. Right. We should not discriminate against them. Ghana, tutune, tutune yeah. is unacceptable. Just like the first thing we said, remember you said a child didn't ask to be born, so yeah. don't discriminate. Mm. And uh, when it comes to tribe, yeah. nobody went to God and said, make me no. a ABC, okay? Mm. And disability too is the same thing. Nobody yeah. wanted to be in an accident no, so they can no, crawl on the floor. No. And it's also the same. So, but why is it so easy for us to look down on people with disability and stuff like because that? Because we are scared. Why are we scared? Yeah, because they look different. And um, even parents who have children with disability tend to hide them because of the stigma okay. and what have you. And that is why we had the Henry Jabba Foundation okay. is named after my father because okay. he had stroke and towards the end he became a person with disability because okay. he couldn't feed himself sometimes, he couldn't talk, he couldn't <sighs> walk and what have you. And so you have to treat them with love. And we have designed a program called the Let's Talk Ability. We've even given an award for it uh, recently for people to speak out and mm -hmm. to change our um, attitudes and raise awareness about the rights of persons with disability mm -hmm. and their ability. Okay. And you'll be amazed at what persons with disability can do. Okay. Children with special needs, how they can sing, how they can learn. Oh, yeah, I've it's seen, about I've seen patience that. and I've love. Yeah, I've seen that. And making they sure have, that uh, you don't discriminate against They them. have special Olympics, remember? Yes, they Where go for the Paralympics. Yeah, yes. Paralympics. Yeah, but okay. in Ghana, yeah. We tend to throw them away. Yeah. And you say, what percentage of population you. are the they? The population, 7% of our population are persons that with disabilities. That is, I cannot sit here, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, uh, advocate mm. for diasporans. Mm. And the operating percentage of diasporans uh, is about 8% of the population. Mm. And here you have 7% of the population yeah. with disability. Mm -hmm. And we just want to throw them away. You can't. That's not right. It's against the That's law, right. number one. So let's look at your three mm. E's. I know yeah. the education piece <laughs> that you talk. <laughs> yeah, now the engineering. Sanitation and the enforcement. Right. Yeah, mm. yeah but I think, say... It cannot be applied. It can be applied with here. Discrimination. So you've talked about the um, um, Raising education, awareness, yeah. all right? How does the other two? How do they? Yeah, you other have to have the structures apply. in okay. terms of accessibility. Accessibility. When you are going to a place that is a story building, you have a lift or you have ramps. Mm -hmm. uh, when we build our schools, mm -hmm. you make sure that the verandas are not too high, mm -hmm. so the children with wheelchairs mm -hmm. or um, crutches can move. Mm -hmm. You need to have sign language interpreters mm -hmm. wherever, because sign language interpreters will need to work for the persons with hearing impairment. Yes, yeah. You need to make sure that those with sight impairment have braille. 
school. Okay. You need to make sure that the special schools have specialized teachers. Okay. And even in schools that we have what we call integration or inclusion, mm -hmm. you have teachers who know how to handle children with dyslexia okay. or children with Down syndrome. Okay. And we must have social workers, more social workers. Currently, there are about uh, 237,000 people to one social worker. Wow. So can you imagine? Wow. That's why we have issues. And then the enforcement to make sure that anybody, anybody who throws their child away, who neglects that child, who abuses that child because the person is a person with disability, there is a sentence a for sentence. jail yeah. against them. Do they have that reali realistically here in the judicial system? It is. The laws are there, but as I is said, they're not being enforced. enforced. Okay. And you must not kill a child with disability, disability. or a person with disability. Yeah. It's yeah. against the law. It's a crime against yeah. nature. Some will say, oh, what do you say to those who say it's going to cost me much more to raise this uh, child with disability because I don't have the money for you it. You can't quantify a human being. Okay. That child is okay. going to bring you laughter. Okay. It's going to bring you joy. Okay. You have no idea that maybe this child that you are neglecting or throwing away, that is the child who is going to come and help you. That's right. I have a friend called Bobo. He is uh, sight impaired and um, he had a tumor when he was nine and it affected his eyes okay. and he became blind. He tells me that when he was younger, and he could see. He wasn't very bright at school. But when he became visually impaired, today he's the yeah, highest learned take person. Over. Yes. Okay. And so he has a master's degree. He's teaching IT at the University of Ghana. Wait. Yes. A blind guy. Yes. Teaching IT. Yes. Okay. I'll get him to come on your show. Okay. Bobo is amazing. Bobo. Yes, he's Alexander. Bobo, if you're watching, <laughs> we want to see you. A blind guy teaching an yeah, IT course. They IT sing. Course. They okay. do everything, and they are amazing. Okay. Um, there is a guy who uses a wheelchair. He has problems with his legs. He currently he's training to go for the Paralympics. Okay. McLean. Okay. He did accounting, and nobody would employ him, okay. so he started getting into sports, and okay. now. He's training in America to go for the Paralympics. Yeah. There are different types of uh, disability. Before and it's the passion of my life. And I just want to say <laughs> that people should watch the Let's Talk Ability Show. Finally, before we go, I know there's an area that you didn't want to go. What's but that? Uh, you didn't want to touch on politics and mm. everything. But when you talk about the three E's, mm. education, mm. engineering, mm -hmm enforcement mm. I by the power decreed by, by the power vested in me I hereby decree Dr. Otiko Jabba mm -hmm. as president what would you do if you were in a position to effect the change that you're talking about I told you that I wouldn't answer any question related to this politics. is not politics but I'm saying no. if you had the power to what no, would you no. do no comment what would you in other words I'm, I'm talking about the thing that you're championing, you talked about the education piece, the engineering piece, and the enforcement piece. What should we do to enforce that people who treat disability, disabled people, uh, tribalism, uh, children, what should be done? You don't have to be president to do anything. Okay. In my own small way, I'm doing what I feel that I can do. Okay. In your small way and you watching, you also do what you can do. You okay. contribute your widow's mind okay. to be a change agent. Yeah. You have to break barriers. Okay. You have to raise the bar okay. to make sure that yeah. uh, the things that we don't like in Ghana, mm -hmm. we do them differently to give us the Ghana we can believe in, the Ghana yeah. that we'll be proud of, the Ghana that we can leave for our children. Okay. So you don't have to be a president. Yeah. To I, do I, any I of believe those it. Things. The president thing was just a yeah. joke. But so I'm just the saying that you can go ask him. I, I don't know. want to I'm be just president. Saying that I just want to the enforcement my small piece. The enforcement quota. piece though. Mm -hmm. You and I, no matter how passionate we are, no matter how passionate I am about diaspora, mm -hmm. no matter how yeah. passionate mm -hmm. you are, mm -hmm. when you talk about the three E's mm -hmm. I can make a difference at the education piece. Yeah. I can make a difference at the engineering piece mm -hmm. because if I care much about it, I can invest in the, uh, the engineering. Yeah. But when it comes to the enforcement piece, mm -hmm. it takes authority to do that. So what do we do? Mm. You can push that as well. You can organize walks. You can organize demonstrations. Okay. You make sure that things happen. We didn't want to have um, a, a second chamber. People have said that they don't. The power of the time, the power of the people is the biggest power. I forgot about that. Spoken like a true strategist. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching Diaspora Weekly, and we have to end it here. I want to thank uh, Dr. Otiko. Uh, you see, I have a Queen problem. Mother as well. A Queen Mother. <laughs> What's the name of your? Uh, Manfidove. Manfidove. I'm a development uh, Queen Mother. Wow. Yeah. Final, what's your final word to viewers about the thing that you're most passionate about? I want to say that we're all change agents. Let us love one another and treat each other with respect. Okay. We are each other's keeper. And the children belong to God and they belong to the community and to Ghana. And so if you want to see a better Ghana, you have to respect children. If you want to have a Ghana that you believe in, you have to respect persons with disability and show them love. If you want to change the environment, you change it yourself. You have to focus and you mustn't let anybody distract you. If you are in the diaspora, come home and teach your children the tree, the ga, whatever it is. Let them understand that it is good to be a Ghanaian. And then you come home and you come and help. Monkey, they work baboon, they chop. You know they happen. <laughs> Come and be part of the change you want to see so that we can all build this Ghana or die trying. Because Ghana is the best place on earth. It is our country. And we make it what we want it to be and leave it for our children. And if we can't get it right now, we'll die trying. The Ghana that we want to have. Come and help to build that Ghana. Wow. Speaking like a true patriot. <laughs> Let me, let, this is Diaspora Weekly. We have to end it here. But let me just say this. So far, there is not a single guest who have come here who have, in spite of all the problems, sounded pessimistic about the, uh, the prospect of diasporans coming home. They come home, they face the issues, and they deal with it in their own, uh, they deal with those issues in their own little way. Okay? And so my, my, the final take is, come home because no matter what the problems are every single person who has been on this show is not saying stay there they're saying come home yep this is diaspora weekly have a great week